You rock, my friends. You Rock Podcast is for women like you who want to own your life and live an engaged and joyful life. Hosted by Dr. Aliyah Majid, mom of three, devoted wife, and a scientist turned life coach on a mission to empower women to take control of their lives. In this podcast, we deliver tools, insights, and inspiration on rocking your own life, owning to your highest potential, and becoming the best version of you. Now, here's your host, Dr. Aliyah Majid. Do you feel like you are working hard every day but feel like no progress is being made? You are wanting to do other things that excite you but you are over-occupied with your already long to-do list. With so many interruptions and distractions, it's hard to find time to get your most important work done. Hi, I'm Dr. Ali Majid. I'm success and productivity coach. And for the last eight years after having my first son, I've been struggling to make progress on my career. I work harder than others, but I was not making any progress. I was tired, miserable, and stressed out all the time. Last five years, I quit my job thinking that it would solve my problem because if I don't have to work, I would not be stressed, right? And no, no at all. That was when I was most anxious in my life. I don't know what to do and I don't have something to look forward to for myself every day. I felt like my whole life of hard work has gone to waste and I started behaving weird and not like myself. I felt my kids were a burden and do not have the motivation to do anything. I felt lost. That's when I start to realize that I need to start to listen to my needs. I need to do something for me because I was brought up and learned that women are able to be successful in their work. Therefore, I went to pursue my long time dream of getting my PhD and that's when I really took serious about my self-development and productivity. And today, I'm inviting you guys to join me to my free masterclass on how you can increase your productivity. It's a masterclass that will teach you the three steps framework to work less hour and achieve your career goals without burning out. In the free masterclass, you will learn a complete breakdown on how I manage my productivity to graduate my PhD on time while working part-time and taking care of my kids in Japan. The same lessons my clients use that have helped them overcome negative self-talk and limiting beliefs that hinders their progress and the most de- detrimental mistakes ambitious women make when trying to do it all to achieve their goals that don't work. Join me by signing up at dralihamajid.com slash masterclass. It's Dr. D-R-A-L-I-A-H-M-A-J-I-D dot com slash masterclass. I see you there. Assalamualaikum and I'm very thrilled to welcome our special guest today. Our special guest today is Datin Dr. Hasno Liza Abu Hassan, known as Datin Dr. Liz Abu Hassan. She is the founder and chief executive officer of Adla Group Sajan Rahat which provides training and coaching in the best entrepreneurial practices. She is also an author, speaker, and mentor. She is a mom of five girls and one boy. Her book, Winning Woman, is a collection of heartwarming success stories celebrating winning women from different industries, reflecting the five pillars of priorities, which are faith, family, self-fulfillment, finance and business, and friends and community. And her second book is about The Millionaire's Guide to Building Business Right. It's a powerful guide to get a real-world preparation for entrepreneurship. Latin Dr. Lee holds MBA and Bachelor in Science in Business Administration and Accounting from California State University and a PhD in Business Management from One Barrow College Island. So welcome, Datin, Dr. Liz, and thank you for taking the time to be with us here today. Hey, hi, Alia. Yeah, thank you so much. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, so Datin, Dr. Liz, let's get straight to the first question for you today. So why do you do what you do? Okay, a very interesting question. Okay, first and foremost, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to all the listeners today. And I'm actually very thrilled to be invited by Dr. Alia to be one of the speakers on this podcast of hers. Congratulations to you. All right. So your first question to me, uh, why do you, why do you do what you do? Basically, you know, how did I get started? So it was not really a planned journey for me to become an entrepreneur. I could say that it was an accidental entrepreneur to a serial entrepreneur. 
Okay, so that was the 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 beginning of my journey to to do what I'm doing at the moment. So looking back into the journey, I suppose uh, at the at the point of time, I was like looking looking for something that I would be able to do at the same time uh, manage my time, uh, manage my family, and also have a fulfillment of my own need. Okay, as you said that we have gone through education, you know, we have learned so hard. And we have traveled the miles to study and uh, being sent by the government to to study, you know, under, under the government scholars and all this. So I suppose we will continue, you know, our journey in life as such that we'll be able to contribute back to the community. So for me, whatever I do now is more to contribute back to the community, to the women out there and empowering them in all aspects in your life. And I'm here to help every woman that, that needs help from me. So that's basically why I'm here, you know, why I do what I do. Mm-hmm. So I'm uh, intrigued by what you're saying about accidental entrepreneur. How do you get started in the business? As I said previously, I was actually working with the MNC company as an accountant. Mm-hmm. One day I was like a bit, I couldn't say I was tired, you know, mm-hmm. but I was caught with so many responsibility. And at that time, the kids were quite small. Mm-hmm. The kids were small, you know, and I kept looking at them and I was thinking what would be the best way for me to now manage the situation, you know, from from having two kids, you mm-hmm. know, I had twins, so it becomes four, mm-hmm. you know, from two to become four is like kind of like, you know, oh, okay, you know, it's like double, you mm-hmm. know, so I, 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 didn't, I didn't really start because I wanted to become an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I started because I wanted to own my time. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how. Uh, that's why I say I, it's an accidental entrepreneur. It wasn't the desire, you know, to become uh, to to become a successful entrepreneur. It wasn't the desire to to have well to get wealth wealthy, you know, through entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. It wasn't so much of recognition to become significant in, in the industry. It was more so of having control of my time. Mm-hmm. Okay, having control of my time, and then uh, because I find it was very difficult for me to manage the kids and also my own fulfillment. Mm-hmm. So that's why uh, entrepreneurship is something that I feel that is very, very flexible in a sense that I can actually manage my own time without having to answer to somebody else. Mm-hmm. All right. Of course, having said that, there was a lot of mindset changes that I need to do. Mm-hmm. Because to become, uh, to be for this as an as an employee, you know, mm-hmm. where you are being detected. That's so why I talk about time, you know, as an employee, mm-hmm. uh, you have to be guided, you know, mm-hmm. between these boundaries of a uh, nine to five. Mm-hmm. So to clocking in nine to five is not difficult. It's not difficult at that time because you are being, we call it, there is actually rules and regulation. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you were actually pay, you got paid for the time that you trade, mm-hmm. trading time for money, right? But as a, as a Usaha one, as an entrepreneur, you need to have that. I need to actually shift my mind, you know, mindset change mm-hmm. on how do I change from, from entrepre- uh, employee to become entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's a lot of self-awareness, you know, and I need to develop a lot of new skills and reskilling, you know, develop, developing new skill was something that caught me because I was thinking that susah sangat ke nak jadi usahawan at that time, you know, what's so difficult, you know, but I was quite wrong, mm-hmm. you know, that that was something that I encountered lah. Like in my early early years as an usahawan. Yeah, like you mentioned just now, mindset change from being an employee to being an entrepreneur is something, it's really hard, you know, because we thought that entrepreneurship is something like glamorous, right? People are, mm. are saying that you can do whatever you want and get paid for it and be fulfilled with doing what you love. But at the start of it, there's a big mindset block when we are changing from yeah, trading our time with money to to now really owning our time and how can we really generate the income for ourselves, right? So, All right. Uh, so what are the challenges, especially as a, as a woman entrepreneur, especially in the beginning, what did you face at that time? Okay, again, you know, I feel that, in fact, I'm not talking about in the beginning, until, I mean, this, this point of time, I think these are the few things that as a woman, especially as a woman entrepreneur that I am facing, and I think a lot of women are facing, you know, these are the three things. Mm. First is about their time management. Mm. Okay. Second is just stress management. And third is the financial management. Okay. So that these are the three things because uh, talking about time, as I say again, you know, uh, although first we trade time for, we are trading time for money, mm. but now we are actually owning the time. Mm. All right. So how much time can we actually put in aside, you know, having that, 
schedule, follow to the routine, you know, that we are be able to now see, okay, these are the time that I'm going to be handling my business. This is the time for my family and doing other things. So a lot of women, you know, they have this issue of, we call it managing their time. Okay, so through what I always teach women, I say, let's look into your, your daily activities and even your week, week, weekly and, and monthly activities. What do you do to see that how much time have you put uh, in your business, you know, and, and for you to achieve success that what you wanted, lah, all right? Because business is about putting time as well to work on it. You know, it, it will not come in easily, you know, like say today, I, mean, I used to run a retail shop. Like you open the shop today and then people just walk in. It doesn't work that way. So you need to actually put a lot of time and effort in your project. Mm-hmm. Like say you, you you really want to make sure that your 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 retail shop that has been, uh, people know that you have a shop at certain location, you know, and how much time they're going to put in actually managing that marketing activity. So that's one thing about time, time management. Mm. The second one is more like stress management. Why is it? Yeah, because when we are entrepreneurs, okay, not to say that we are more stressful than as employee, mm-hmm. you know, but because we are trading our, our business for the time that we have. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and that will sometimes makes us in the stage of managing our own emotions okay, and the struggles that we have because to, to make it simple, I think most women, you know, uh, as the micro SME, when they go into entrepreneurship, most of them felt that they want to spend more time with the family mm. because I've been in industry for a while. So that is what they, they, they feel that to be to become an usahawan, you know, they will be able to have that, that time to be the family. But mm. when they become an usahawan, uh, that's the real thing comes in. They say, oh, okay. There's so much things to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to do marketing. I got to do sales. I got to do public relations. I got to do customer service and mm-hmm. everything. You mm-hmm. know, that's where they become stressful. Mm-hmm. That's where they they can be the hit them. Mm-hmm. So that's also a, a, a challenges that a lot of uh, women entrepreneurs are facing. You know, not just right at the beginning. Beginning maybe wasn't that that the uh, they they they, they may be their assignments there. Mm-hmm. So they maybe have not made they, they don't really feel that too pressure. Mm-hmm. You know, but after a while it will come in, you know, especially when they don't have enough knowledge, when they have to start go out there and equip themselves with knowledge, you know, and 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 they have to attend a lot of maybe training, you know, to upscale themselves. So that's one. That's number two. Okay, number three, I feel that challenges as a woman entrepreneur. Yeah, facing is financial management as well. Mm. Okay, because sometimes, you know, having the excitement, having the passion, you know, to, to build the business, you know, they want it to, to, to we call it maybe induce so people get to know their product, people get to know them, you know, mm. and people get to know what they are doing, you know, and they start to put a lot of investment into the business, you know, mm. without even looking into the long-term planning itself. Mm. So when they when they got caught, you know, when they feel that they have they have put so much money and the results is not as what they wanted, all right. So that's where they start to they are struggling, you know, they will start looking into where else they can actually find the money. Mm. So that's where these three things will will actually we call it it will be interrelated. Managing the time, you know, that will be very stressful and also finding the money. Because see, that's the three things that I can see women especially will go into this vicious circle. Mm. Yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Liz. Okay, Dr. Liz. So mm. you mentioned just now that at the beginning we have this excitement, right? Uh, excitement, right? When we are starting mm-hmm. a new business, a new idea, we are really excited about it. But then after a while, uh, the result that we wanted doesn't come yet, right? So what do you do to always stay motivated when this time comes, when, when the excitement is gone, but the result uh, that you wanted doesn't uh, come yet? So what do you really do when that time comes? Mm, very, very tough question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Because I, I think another day, you know, as a business coach, you know, when I when I coach my coaches and when I mentor them as well, mm-hmm. you know, I really tell them I ask to begin with the niat lah, mm-hmm. niat, you know, your intention mm-hmm. and your main purpose and motivation and why you really desire to be an usahawan and mm-hmm. an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. because it does take a lot of I say a change of mindset, you know, and upscaling of your own uh, skills that you have, you can really have and driving, kata driving the miles and, and, and also we call it going through these uncertainties, 
Mm. Okay, but how do I keep myself happy and all this is to just tell myself that this is my journey lah. Nah Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala dah 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 tentukan, you know, uh, that I this is my path, mm. and I have to reda with whatever that 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 kata that be created for me and make it happen. Mm. Make it happen. There's uh, no no more turning back, you know, because we have burned our bridges. Mm-hmm. We have burned our bridges, <laughs> and uh, we have left kata corporate career and to to be in this uh, uncertainty, you know, mm. and. Most important, we have to make it work and stay focused. Mm. Okay, stay focused. But to stay focused, sometimes it does take a lot of effort. Mm. A lot of effort because sometimes it's okay. I mean, when I speak to people, I, I tell them it's okay for us to take time off and also uh, take uh, three three steps back, you know, and, and reflect again on the situation. Okay, and see which area that maybe have gone wrong and which area that we can actually make it better, you know, or which area that perhaps it's, it's not really relevant mm. at all, mm. okay? And and to do that, you know, a lot of self-awareness is very, very important. To become a usawan, I think the most important is, is knowing yourself. Mm. Knowing yourself, you know, is the attitude, you know, of, of being, being resilient, you know, be positive, stay positive, and be a problem solver. Mm. Uh, because I think those are the three things, you know, three t- traits that we, we must have. Mm. And because the uncertainty will always come in, of course, become a pandemic is a different uncertainty, mm. you know. But as a usahawan, the uncertainty will forever happen, you know, during the journey. Mm. You know, it could be our internal issues with the family. It could be an external thing, you know, with a competitor. It could be also something that the economy, you know, the the the, the VUCA, the mortality, and all this. You know, we do not know where it come, where, where it come, where where it will come from. Mm. So we have to be ready, lah. Mm. We have to be ready all the time. Yeah, that's true. When we start with the intention, the right intention, starting it off, and having a right mindset when we started this business. So what what's the the actual thing that we want to achieve, right? What what do we want to serve, right? So we yes, when we start correct. with that. I think whatever problem that Allah challenges that Allah gives for us, um, mm-hmm. there's there's a silver lining to it, right? There's a Correct. there's a thing that you can learn. Yeah. Yes. So, Doctor Liz, what do you do to always stay balanced with your business and life? Because you are a mom of six, right? So that's mm-hmm. yeah. How how do you make balance life within your business and life? Okay. All right. I will love never be balanced. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's something that I've learned. I say mm. that I know when I first I work it well, I balance. Uh, people come to me and ask me, what's your tip? Mm. How can you stay balanced? Okay. I say, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that that is a tip. There's no clear cut when it's formula for anybody. Mm. You know, it all depends on your own life. Mm. Okay. So for me, how do I stay balanced? I focus on these very simple priorities of my life. Mm. Okay. I always got to look into these priorities to be a guide. A guide for me to realign back, you know, if there's anything out of balance. If if I feel that, you know, for example, you know, that people have known me for a while, I always put that Allah is first, mm-hmm. you know, the faith towards Allah and then we have family and then we have our own self-fulfillment, then we have our business and our community, friends and all this, you know. Mm-hmm. But this is a guide that I use. So if I feel that, as you say correctly, you know, I start to feel that I'm out of balance, for example, that I feel very upset that things happen, you know, why I start to blame maybe myself and I go back and and and, and reflect back and say, maybe this is what Allah has planned. Okay, the business that I'm supposed to go in, you know, uh, tak, 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 kata tak berjaya kerana mungkin adalah musibah di sebalik dia and and learn from the ujian yang telah kita hadapi lah you know mm. and 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 reflect for that matter so it it brings me kata to a level of comfort that anything happen you know that Allah has planned it that way mm. okay but of course kita tak boleh berserah lah kita kena kata work for work kata put in our effort mm. okay put in our effort to make sure that it works but it doesn't work then we have to make sure that we look into alternative way you know, and to, to make it work. And then second, family, you know, when it comes to children, when it comes to family and all this, you know, I always put them priority at the, uh, rather than my, my own career or my own business. Mm-hmm. Because now, now even my kids are all grown up, you know, mm-hmm. and they are all in school and some are working, some are still in university and secondary school, you know, but still that part of the deal as a mother, 
okay is if kita tak boleh lepas pandang lah it means mm. that we always have to be on top of the children mm. so when i when i when i when i start to be so busy sampai terlupa dirilah kata macam sibuk sangat ke sana ke sini kolo kile with my business you know i always go back to my niat and that say, say i always wanted to make sure that i focus on my children that's why i my niat kan in the beginning right mm. to to have that time to be with my children when they were small Mm. So that kind of uh, motivation, you know, I mean, sorry, the intention mm. uh, was still got to be there mm. in me. Mm. Okay, so my intention to have that control of the time because I wanted to be with my children stays, mm. whatever it is. Okay, so that that is the yardstick lah. That uh, that when I feel that my life is imbalance, I like foc- I I spend too much time, you know, doing things, you know, and not focusing with the children. I mean, not focusing on my responsibility as a mother, you know. Then kita kena kena kata kena adjust balik lah. Mm-hmm. Kena adjust balik and look 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 back at the schedule. You know, mm-hmm. so that's how that's how I stay my I stay balanced and mm-hmm. stay happy. You know, insyaallah, alhamdulillah lah. Walaupun sometimes you know we feel that we have to sacrifice mm-hmm. a lot of things. So for me to stay balanced, there are some sacrifices that we have to make. Mm-hmm. Itu je, because we cannot have a perfect life. You know, mm-hmm. we cannot have like everything that we want to do. Everything to be kata in our own way. Everything that we smooth sailing. There be certain things that we have to put it aside mm. for us to achieve something else. So that's how. Yeah, I, I I agree with you that balance is not achievable. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yes, right? but uh, mm. we we can only achieve it by prioritizing whatever that matters to us, like uh, yourself. Allah is the first, and then family and so on, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that being said, I want to know, I really want to know what's your morning routine look like because you mentioned about scheduling and all that, right? I really <laughs> want to know, ha, what do you do first thing in the morning? Oh, okay. Right. Just to let you know, I'm not really a morning person. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, first and foremost. Okay, so that's post-COVID. Mm-hmm. Okay, post-COVID. Okay, post-COVID, settle the children. Okay, settle the children and I will just go off to work. Hmm. So that's just that's what I do mm. in the morning, you know, and and but now having this situation which is like having been home for mm. a while, working from home, you know. So the routine has changed. The routine has changed, you know. I I I I I find it so more fulfilling, you know, that I can do a lot of things with the time that I have. Mm. Okay, so in the morning, you know, I I try to catch up with some a Quran, you know, reading and all this. And of course, going back, to, going to the kitchen and and see what we can prepare for mm. lunch, mm. if if possible. Because I don't cook. I don't. Okay, I do not cook twice a day. Mm. All right, because I think it will be very imbalanced for me to cook twice a day because we have work to do. So I just prepare basic food. So when they come down, you know, because everybody is working, I mean, studying from home and all this. When they come down, they will be able to actually just pick up whatever I have prepared in the kitchen. Mm. You know, so I I will start my work. I'll start my work and focus on my work, and then I will I will not be kata continuous working lah from home. It will be very very tiring mm. to continuous working, mm. you know. So that would be some time off until I'm mean, actually talking about morning only, right? Morning only, right? <laughs> uh, it's okay because every person's morning maybe up to afternoon. <laughs> ah, yeah, some up to to the afternoon. But but I'm more aware of I'm not I'm not the type yang I know some people bangun dalam pukul 4 pagi dia dah start. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm not, I to be very very frank with you, mm. I, I, I'm I not like that. Mm. <laughs> okay, I I I can actually stay up. Mm. But right, I should sleep at 10.30. Mm-hmm. That is the best time to sleep until 2 o'clock. Mm. Right? But having said that, that is something that maybe I will not be able to achieve lah because maybe the, my, my mindset is not really there. So I will not be able to sleep early and wake up very early. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I will... I'm more like a, a late night person. Mm-hmm. Okay, so things that I I want to do, like say I want to do some reading, I I want to do some journaling. Mm-hmm. I need to to reschedule my plan and all this. I will do it at night. Mm-hmm. Okay, I will do it at night. So tomorrow morning, I know that whatever I'm to do. But my routine is quite I'm quite a routine person. Mm-hmm. That's why working from home is is something that is uh, working very well for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, but having said that, you know I do not I do not I make sure that the routine does not disrupt with the work that I do. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so just very, very important. So when people come to me and ask, how did they, how, how do you have to manage all this working from home and all this? So I say, you have to set a routine that it does not disrupt what you do. Mm-hmm. So business is still business, you know. So you need to plan your timing to make sure that you put some time. I mm-hmm. say, even you don't have to put the eight hours. Okay, so you, you, you focus on four hours, whatever time that is suitable. Mm-hmm. Whatever time that is suitable. Mm-hmm. Okay, based on your own situation, environment at home. Mm-hmm. Okay, because it's, it does, as I say, it's very, very difficult. But for pre-COVID, just to be to be on share with you, if I actually pre-COVID, I I would normally when I go to the office, I will have a cup of coffee for about one hour with myself. Mm-hmm. I used to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, that okay, I, uh, where I I will catch up with some messages, mm-hmm. uh, WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then if I need to reply any email that I need. I will do that for the one hour. Mm-hmm. Okay. I normally will just go to one of the cafe. You know, normally they will just go to either Starbucks or Coffee Bean and all this, you know. Until they already know, like the moment I walk in, they already know I what I wanted. I can get special, I got special service like, when I go to <laughs> Coffee Bean. Yeah, I'm so regular. Yeah. Okay. I will just sit there. And then when I do my work, I normally do not want to be interrupted with messages. Mm. Okay. So I'm not the type that, that will have to answer it on the spot, but I will do it in the morning. Mm. okay so that's yeah. how i do yeah because uh, now since covid i think all of us have been struggling with keeping our routine and we, we cannot really uh, do what we have been doing uh, for so long right like, like you like to uh, spend alone time but m- most of the, us uh, having kids you know that's not necessarily actually achievable right but Correct. it's good to know that you also is not a morning person, but you you devote the now you devote the night time so that you can at least have some time for yourself for your planning, and that's I think maybe one of the solution when when it comes to you know living with our kids at home right now. I honestly me I I, I kind of I have I am I'm actually a morning person, but it's getting harder and harder because you know now the kids are totally at home all the time so. I don't really have extra time to do things that I love doing previously. So this makes me starting to stress out that, oh no, I cannot do my morning routine and so on. So that, yeah, uh, I mean, having plan B kind of routine is also maybe necessary nowadays, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So for all of my guests coming to my podcast, mm. I, I love mm. to ask this last question which is what does living an engaged life means to you, Doctor? Mm, okay, what does an living an engaged life means to you? Mm-hmm. Okay, for me, you know, I advocate having a fulfilling and abundance life. Mm-hmm. Okay, so for me, we have to be grateful in whatever we have, mm-hmm. all right, and achieving whatever dreams that we have. You know, at the same time, you know, there's no a perfect life. Mm. There's no life that is perfect. If you're not living in a fairy tale, Cinderella, kind of Snow White, and all this, you know, that we we always ambition, ambition, I mean, we always ambition that maybe one day a prince will come and, and marry and, and we live in a big castle, you know. Mm. But we have to work hard, you know, in terms of having the fulfillment that we want in our life. And stay engaged means that you have to take life, you have to go through life. Mm. Go through life, you know, enjoy the moment, enjoy the moment, you know, there must be, there there will have be, there will be some chaos, there will be some confusion, there will be some conflict and challenges, you know, but that is part of life. Mm. And and just embrace every moment and and, and ensure that most important, you do reflect in every moment that that you face, the crisis that you face. Mm. So once you reflect, you know, you need to kind of find a way to, to kind of bring yourself back, you know, and refresh your mind. And also that you can restart. So because I also wrote, wrote a book, you know, uh, when I when when the first, I mean, when the pandemic hit us, mm-hmm. that called, but, you know, mm-hmm. menghadapi cabaran COVID, pandemic COVID-19, bukan, kan, untuk kita menyerah kalah lah. Mm-hmm. All right. So I talk about the four R, that is also the, uh, I can actually share a little bit, you know, you reflect the situation, then you will start to, we call it a recover, you know, find ways how to recover. Mm-hmm. And then you uh, re- have a refreshing mind before you even, kata, we call it, start to embark in a new journey that you want. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's how, kata, we have to, kata, live real, 
okay and also be ourselves be happy with who we are mm-hmm. and 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 we call it and got to stay stay in the stay present lah stay in the present because mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, they were not got the, they they have they will feel a lot of pains and have challenges because they they are so worried about the future mm. even they are they still got to living in the past mm. okay so that will make them got this engage with life mm. so let's to be engaged with life stay in the present mm. and 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 go through the go through the moment you know and enjoy the memories lah Mm. Enjoy the memories and 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 just kata. But what I also feel that if we go to life, kita ni kita banyak kita muhasabah diri. Mm. Then we have to kata help a lot of people, you know, that are maybe uh, less fortunate than us. Mm. And that makes us feel very humble and and kata stay grounded lah in whatever we are being given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that that being engaged with life is to really stay in the present because sometimes we are really getting this anxiety around uh, the future and been thinking about the past that we 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 used to be maybe before COVID happened, right? So we doesn't really engage with what actually is in front of us, right? So yeah, uh-huh. for those who would like to know more about Dr. Lee's book, I will also give the link in this uh, podcast episode. I also uh, put it in the show notes after this. And yeah, for the four R is reflect, recover, refreshing your mind, and then embarking restart. Uh, restart, yeah, rest, yeah restart, restart to in the restart. new journey of your life. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's really great, really, really what we want to keep on pursuing, and uh, especially after this, we are maybe starting a new, a new journey, endemic, uh, the endemic, right? So yeah, this is something yeah. that uh, we really need to live by. Yeah, look at this. Correct, betul, true. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all. Uh, that's the questions that I would like to ask. Is there mm-hmm. any other things that you want to the advices that you like to give to the audience today? Okay, all right. So first and foremost, I would like to thank Dr. Alia lah for uh, inviting me, you know, to this uh, podcast. To be honest with you, this is actually my my first podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have, yeah, I, I find it so interesting, and I find it so to learn from young people like you, you know, and that embracing the technology lah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what I would like to actually, uh, I mean, for me, you know, I, um, what I would like to actually tell the woman out there, you know, never be afraid to be yourself, mm-hmm. you know, and go out there and 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 learn new things in life that could could actually make you a better person and pursue uh, the things that you are passionate about. Mm-hmm. Okay, because eventually, you know, things may be a bit chaos your your instead of confusion because of this imbalance and all this, you know. But if you keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And you'll be able to find something that that you are really really good at, and 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 tap on that skill that you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, Dr. Liz. Yeah, thank you so much for again being with us today, and I hope our podcast session today will give so much insights to all of our listeners out there, and to go pursuing your life and to live a more engaged life. Okay, now let's catch the key takeaways on this conversation with Datin Dr. Liz Hassan. First of all, mindset matters and self-awareness is important to start anything that's worth it. It doesn't matter at what stage you are in your business, there's always a mindset change that you need to learn. Being an entrepreneur means being able to change and live up to the challenges of life. Next, priorities as a guide to staying balanced in your life. There's no such thing as a perfect balance in life, but knowing your priorities will help you stay true to yourself and what you need and how you want to live your life. Being present is a way to always engage with your life again. Self-awareness is important if you are not aware of what's in front of you and are living in the past or thinking too much of the future, you are not engaging with your current life. And then upskilling by learning to get up again after setbacks is what every woman need to know. Being active to find and learn new things through your journey of building your business is really important. Finally, click the link that I provide in the podcast player to get Datin Dr. Liz's uh, recent book, Berani Bangkit Cabaran COVID-19, Menyerah Bukan Pilihan and follow her along on her Instagram at 
Dr. Liz Hassan, D R L E E Z H A S S A N, to know more of her upcoming webinars and join whenever it's available. And my question for you today would be that you can answer this at U Rock Podcast on Instagram, U Rock dot Podcast. What are your hesitations about entrepreneurship and going into business? Let's talk about it over there in the comments. And don't forget to join my free live masterclass at dralihamajid.com slash masterclass. That's all for today. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. As always, remember to subscribe for inspiration, start your day with intention, love what you do and end your day with gratitude. I'll see you back on the next episode next Tuesday. Assalamualaikum.